Before I go on to answer this question, let me ask you something very bluntly. If a patient feels a mild side effect with finasteride, should the answer be so simplistic that he should jump onto dutasteride, a far more potent drug? Because this is the dangerous myth floating around these days that if you have problems with finasteride, you are at full liberty to switch over to dutasteride. It spreads through social media and casual advice like dry grass catching fire. And what troubles me most is that people follow this advice blindly without understanding the pharmacology or the basic logic behind such an escalation. It is the medical equivalent of saying your seat belt is tight, so what? Remove the brakes next time. So before we walk down that cliff, let us examine what is real, what is imagined and what is clinically justified. So hang on. In modern hair loss management, where nuance is the bedrock of patient safety, few statements are as reckless and frankly hazardous is the oft-repeated claim, if you experience side effects from finasteride, never mind, just shift to dutasteride. This advice sounds so simple, but behind simplistic solutions often lurks danger. In hair loss medicine as in life, shortcuts more often than not often lead into lengthy detours and nowhere else is it more evident than in the careless suggestion of escalating to dutasteride if you are encountering side effects with finasteride. And before we leap towards the solution today, we must separate truth from illusion, science from hearsay and pharmacological reasoning from casual common sense. The core flaw lies in the assumption that dutasteride is a harmless substitute, which it is definitely not. Finasteride and dutasteride belong to the same pharmacological family and share structural similarities. Their individual biochemical footprints differ, but their hormonal silhouettes overlap. More importantly, dutasteride is far more potent. It blocks almost 95% of your DHT whereas finasteride blocks only 65 and DHT is not a trash hormone as you may think. Dutasteride suppresses both type 1 and type 2 5 alpha reductase and this leads to deeper and longer lasting hormonal suppression. Recommending a stronger drug because the milder one causes side effects or discomfort is like trying to demolish an anthill with an artillery gun. More force is the last thing the situation demands. And the problem is not just biochemical, it is also an ethical problem. Switching from finasteride to dutasteride is not only a biochemical problem, it is also an ethical one. The just shift to dutasteride mindset reduces medicine from a lighthouse of reasoning to a flickering lantern guided by convenience or commercial opportunism. Patients want a quick substitute and some doctors for various reasons feel pressured to give one and the marketplace adds its own momentum towards this escalation from finasteride to dutasteride. But easy medicine as we all know is bad medicine. A significant number of so-called finasteride side effects are driven by the nocebo effect. When patients consume fearful narratives online, their minds brace for catastrophe and the body obliges. Symptoms born from expectation, not pharmacology, appear convincingly real. These are not dangerous, not predictive of future harm and certainly not indications to escalate therapy. These are merely psychological shadows cast by misinformation. And here comes a key insight. Fear migrates with the finasteride molecule. Switching to dutasteride does not dissolve the anxiety. When the mind tightens the knot, changing the rope rarely frees the tension. And such a scenario demands counseling, not escalation. So if the patient is experiencing intolerance to the drug, which could be sexual side effects, which could be discomfort, escalating to dutasteride violates the principle of therapeutic restraint. Dutasteride is appropriate only when biologically warranted in these situations.
To prescribe it just because finasteride caused early discomfort is equivalent to switching from a bicycle to a high-speed motorcycle because you slipped on the wet road with a bicycle. It ignores context, it ignores biology and it definitely ignores common sense. So what should we do? When intolerance is suspected, side effects are reported, the most scientific approach is dose modulation, not abandonment. Finasteride can be titrated with remarkable flexibility. Alternate day dosing, 0.5 mg schedules or thrice weekly regimens. And for more, you can click on the link that I have given in the description below and you'll know the strategies, the five strategies you must incorporate to make even low doses of finasteride as effective as one milligram daily. These strategies often stabilize symptoms while preserving therapeutic benefit. Dutasteride by contrast offers very little room for modulation. Its potency continues to persist even with weekly doses. So switching to dutasteride after mild discomfort is like jumping into deeper waters because the shallow end felt cold. So no patient should be treated as a checkbox, like many regimens nowadays for hair loss are doing. No reaction should be assumed without evidence. No escalation should occur without rationale. Finasteride still remains one of the most widely studied research drugs, safe and effective for androgenic alopecia when used judiciously. Dutasteride also has its rightful place, but that place is narrow, that place is defined, and that place is deliberate. To claim that dutasteride is the automatic default alternative after experiencing side effects due to finasteride is to practice medicine without understanding or unethically because it trades wisdom for convenience, science for noise, and responsibility for expediency. Therapeutic decisions must be rooted in discernment, not panic, because in the end, the best medicine is not the drug we switch to, it is the decision we understand. So have a nice day and God bless you.